edition of Mississippi Stories here on Mississippi Today. I'm your host of this conversation. My name is Marshall Ramsey. I'm the editor at large, of course, at Mississippi Today. And you can check out our great coverage at MississippiToday.org. And you can see a few of my cartoons as well. Well, our guest today is somebody that I got to meet on July, July 17th when she won that really sparkly, shiny crown that she was wearing on her head. She is, of course, Jane Granberry, who is Mississippi's Miss Hospitality for 2021, which she won uh, in 36 amazing contestants at the Sanger Theater amazing. in Hattiesburg. And we'll, we'll talk about that, too, a little bit, because you really had some tough competition, but it was a pretty magical kind of relationship y'all seem to have as well. Jane, thank you for joining me today. And uh, you, of course, are also a student at Ole Miss, so you're taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to me, and I love that you're representing the crown, uh, wearing it there, that's pretty sharp. <laughs> yes, I, thank you I, so I, much for having me today. Oh, no problem, I couldn't keep it on my head, so I'm, I'm very impressed that you can do that. I do have a little bit of a smaller head, so it has been an adjustment, but I'm figuring it out, so I leave it surely. It may take a year, but uh, I figured out a good way to wear it, so it's so. good for me. Your world, is, your world has been quite busy since the last time we saw each other. Um, congr like I said, congratulations again. It was, Thank it, you. Was, it was such a busy night on that Saturday night. And you know, it's literally when that your name is announced, suddenly your whole world is like, bing, 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 bing. You're having, over here for pictures, over there for pictures. There's confetti, there's flowers. You know, you're trying to go say Insane. to everybody else. It was, has it been that kind of pace ever since? I like to say that my life has always really been like that. I like to have my hand in a lot of things and give my time everywhere. I mean, I'm a firm believer that you're going to make time for the things that you want. So yeah. I'm always running around all over the place. But that night in particular was insane, just because like you said, when your name is called, life kind of flips upside down. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a blur still, you know, crown goes on your head. I was hugging the mayor of Hattiesburg, Toby Barker, and then I was walking and I saw my mom and then I was being whisked away to do interviews. I mean, it was the craziest experience, but there was so much love and joy in that night, not only from my family, my supporters, but also the people that I work with now and then also my contestants. I mean, it was a fantastic group of girls that we still talk to each other almost every single day. I see a lot of them on campus at Ole Miss. I'm planning on visiting a lot of them throughout my year. Uh, but I just felt so thankful that day when I got home. And thank thankfully, I didn't have to drive too far. Uh, I got to sleep in my own bed, which was very, very nice. Uh, but I was just being flooded with texts and messages from people who I'd met that week or who had supported me previously, you know, throughout the rest of my life. And it was just, it was a night that I will never forget. And I'm so very thankful for. I have to admit, that was nice for you to be able to win it right there in front of the hometown crowd. It was everything to me because I had competed in competitions before, but I never competed in anything uh, at a state level in my hometown. And being Hattiesburg's Miss Hospitality was such an honor because I had danced in hospitality previously as an entertainer with On Your Toes Dance Studio out of Petal, Mississippi. And I had met these girls and I had met the future winners of Miss Hospitality who represented our state uh, in tourism and economic development for the next year. Uh, but they were just always so incredibly genuine and nice and cared about not only connecting with me, but also connecting with every person that they met that week. Yeah. And so when I got the opportunity to be Hattiesburg's Miss Hospitality, I just felt this, you know, of course, there's a little pressure in it. Pressure is a privilege, okay, yeah. but being and wearing Hattiesburg across my chest was just such a magical thing because that is where I've grown and developed into the young woman I am today. And it was an honor to serve them and uh, represent them through that week. So I cannot imagine being a representative of any other place. Uh, I do have a little bit of a soft spot for Hattiesburg because I grew up there, but Mississippi as a whole, I mean, wearing Mississippi now across my chest is fantastic in itself. It's just two different experiences that I'm so incredibly grateful for. And uh, it's just been a whirlwind of excitement and fun and being crowned in Hattiesburg, it's so, it was so special. Well, for, for number one, just full disclosure, I was one of the judges. I was actually the celebrity no judge. No way, oh my gosh. Yeah, no way. I know, you like you didn't know that. No, but well, the, the viewer may not know, but I mean, I was the celebrity judge, which I, I'm gonna do this right here, the celebrity judge, but <laughs> I, I only got to judge what happened on the stage. I didn't do any of the behind mm -hmm. the scenes. That, and so this contest, for people who don't know what Mississippi's Miss Hospitality contest is, you know, because obviously you, it's not the first time you've ever won 
a big time pageant. So congratulations. We'll talk about that in a second. Thank you. Um, but tell everybody what that what the contest is and what you do now on to help represent Mississippi. So Mississippi's Miss Hospitality is a scholarship competition for girls who have were grown up in Mississippi and still, uh, you know, love this place and want to compete to represent it. So we have two uh, different phases of competition. We have offstage competition, which are composed of two interviews, mm -hmm. a one on one interview with each judge and then also a panel interview. And then also offstage is our speech competition. So every single contestant has a 90 second speech about why they love Mississippi or things about Mississippi that they think are special. And they give that to the judges as well. And then moving on to onstage competition, there is a commercial competition, which is 20 seconds to brag about your hometown or community that you're representing. And then you have the evening gown and onstage question portion of competition. Uh, onstage question doesn't come until uh, the finals round of competition, but evening gown is a part of every single onstage uh, portion of competition. So this year we separated it into two days uh, just to keep people separate, you know, COVID safety, uh, not to have too many people in one place at one time. Uh, so we separated into two groups and that happened on Thursday and Friday or Wednesday, Thursday, break Friday, Saturday competition. Is that right? I think so. I it was kind of a blur. I think we did was Friday it Thursday? Also. Yeah, I think we did Friday also. It was Friday. I yes. didn't know if we had a break or at least, oh, I had a break because you had a break I was in the first phase of competition. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, that's what it was. Right. I, so not everybody got a break. That probably would have been nice, but not They got a break consumer. when you weren't breaking. Yeah, exactly. They Never. got a break when I was on stage. So right. we separated all of that. Uh, it goes, uh, you know, on finals night, we had cuts to the top 15, uh, top 10, top five, all of that fun stuff. Uh, and then top five did on stage uh, on stage question. So did the top ten. Uh, so it was just a real. Do we have a top fifteen? Why am I forgetting all of this? Uh, I think it was ten, and then it dropped down to five. And then your world's been busy since that then. night was just yeah. an, a blur. I don't even remember what number I was called as. It's crazy to think yeah. back on, but what my job is now and what every single local Miss Hospitality is doing uh, is representing their hometown or their home community and then representing economic development and tourism in our state. So my job for the next year or I guess uh, months at this point, oh, that's so weird, uh, <laughs> is to promote our state and promote the incredible things happening here, whether that be uh, museums or music festivals or different restaurants, uh, I am here to support Mississippi and all of its endeavors. And as we move forward as a state uh, to bring more people in and to make more people Mississippians. And it's been an incredible time so far. I've had some incredible appearances that are just, uh, I already have fond memories of and I've met so many incredible people that want the same thing for Mississippi that I do. It's to push our state forward, make our state better each day and to bring people here and help them understand why we love Mississippi so much and why I'm still here today. Uh, because, you know, people leave places that they've grown up because they felt that they've outgrown it, but I don't think I'll ever outgrow Mississippi. I'm here at the University of Mississippi now. I'm in my sophomore year uh, studying history and integrated marketing communications. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole bunch of stuff that we can talk about or we don't have to talk about, uh, but, it's been incredible to stay in my state and see, you know, a different side of Mississippi that I didn't grow up in, and then also have the opportunity to travel home and be in the community that raised me. Uh, so it's been incredible to still be here, and it's incredible to represent Mississippi on this statewide platform and also a national platform uh, in some ways, not only here in Oxford, but also at home and then wherever I travel through the rest of the year. Tell us real quickly a little bit about some of the events that you have done so far. My favorite event that I've done so far is Sanderson Farms. Uh, and I just went to the golf championship, the golf classic in Jackson and got to sit in the um, Mississippi Development Authority tent and kind of talk to all of our tourism professionals and people who work and also uh, just kind of go around and talk to people that are just love Mississippi or traveled here every year for the, the classic in itself and talk about what we love and uh, what we appreciate. But one of my first appearances uh, was actually doing a radio talk with Rebecca nice. and it was just incredible. It was full of good things. And I was talking about things I loved in the state and things that I was involved in. And she dug up some really interesting information about me that I was a Girl Scout and uh, I had not been a Girl Scout in years. <laughs> and what was so funny is when she mentioned it, 
I just said, how did you find that? There's a bunch of things online about me, you know, hospitality and school, and I'm on the dance team at Ole Miss. I said, how in the world did you find out or find a picture of me as a brownie scout with my mom? It was the <laughs> weirdest thing, uh, but it was one of the first appearances that I had had uh, after I won, and it was just so sweet, and I cannot wait to go back and see her uh, because it was such an incredible time. That's great, and I mean, I, you know, like I said, you're so shy. You know, I mean, I know that must have been tough for you to do it. So, oh, so hard. So you, talk hard. About, you talk about, you know, online stalking. I looked at your LinkedIn page and I'm like, okay, you're 19. You found my LinkedIn? It's called Google. It's a really cool thing. <sighs> it's, it's really I easy. know LinkedIn's supposed to be public for whenever I get a job. As an, I guess I am an adult now, but as a I understand. full adult in a few years. Mm -hmm. But I made my LinkedIn and I, I, this is embarrassing, but I had to call my mom and I said, Hey, what's appropriate on here? What's not, I know I don't put anything high school related. I'm not, I'm not that naive, but what do I do? And she said, well, Jane, you're not going to have the longest LinkedIn page. You're eight. I was 18 at this point. So she yeah. said, you're 18. Uh, just put what you're involved in, what you like, what you're majoring in. And then we'll worry about that later. So I cannot believe that you found my LinkedIn. I mean, it's not hard, but I mean, it's not quite to brownie level, mind you, but it was, you know, but the thing was, I'm looking, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, all right, I need to actually get busy and start doing some stuff. It kind of, it almost made me tired. I mean, but you obviously have had a long history of volunteering. You volunteered at Batson, you know, mm -hmm. you have, you did enter, um, was it Miss Mississippi the outstanding team? Was that? that? Yes. 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 You won that. Yes, I did. Okay, that had you ever entered a pageant before then? I mean, were you a pageant kid when you were little or? I was not. Probably, I don't want to say the furthest thing, but I was not involved in any sort of pageant or competitions uh, like that until I was a junior in high school. So I grew up doing, being a competitive dancer, which yeah. made me very comfortable on stage. I'm the middle child. I'm very loud. I mean, I think it's one of the best the best traits of my personality is being a middle child. And so I've always kind of had this uh, really outward demeanor and trying to meet people and hang out and be alone sometimes, but I love to be with people more and uh, meet new people. So when I was a junior, of course, college is kind of stirring up and, you know, everybody's like, where are you going? What do you want to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? And I just tried to block out that as much as possible, but something I knew that I needed was scholarship money. Yeah. Uh, I really wanted to make of it as much on my own uh, and kind of take that off of my parents uh, as much as I could. And so I'm I started out, doing I'm some out, research. I'm out, Jane. As a parent, I just wanted to say, I'm about to cry. That, that's the, <laughs> the most wonderful thing I've ever heard is, I've got three boys, so I understand. So anyway, but that's great. But I mean, you wanted to do it. And so this was a very good way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. How much did... How much scholarship money did you get on the first one? The first, so I competed for that, one year. To ask that? I don't know. No, no it's, it's something okay. that I'm very open about when it okay. comes to these competitions because this is such a big part and this is why it is so beneficial for young women, uh, specifically in Mississippi when I was 17 and I just won outstanding teen. Yeah. I won in that year $10,100 in cash scholarship that could have gone anywhere. Wow. And then I also received, and I did not end up uh, taking up the offer, but at the national level of Miss America's Outstanding Teen, which that is what the Mississippi competition is a preliminary for, yeah. uh, we were all offered a full ride to the University of Alabama, uh, which was very compelling, but wow. it couldn't have pulled me out of Ole Miss uh, because I really wanted to be here. So there are some girls who take that scholarship and it's a fantastic program. Uh, and there are a few other universities across the nation that offer that same amount of scholarship. But uh, I am so thankful for that experience, not only because it helped me grow up more from, you know, I was just 17 years old. I was a kid, uh, but I learned so much from that experiment experience when it comes to, you know, conducting myself in an interview or being present in a community or serving in my community. There are so many things that I've learned about. And it's one of the most impactful experiences of my life up until the point uh, I was 18. Yeah. Uh, so I won that when I was 16. I turned 17 five days later mm -hmm. uh, and then went to nationals, got top 10 out of the country, which was the craziest experience in itself. Uh, nationals were in Orlando, Florida. And so then I came back, started my senior year about four days later, 
uh, COVID hit. So I served as outstanding teen for another year and then gave it up last April. So I went through my freshman year of college being outstanding teen, still doing those appearances when I could, uh, COVID protocol pending, uh, not obviously as much as I wanted to, but it's better to keep people safe than try to put me somewhere where I shouldn't be. So I was serving throughout my freshman year, gave it up in April, and then I competed in Miss Hospitality in July. So yeah. It's so, been very busy, very uh, busy. You um, you got a pretty good track record. I got to give you credit. I, it, it's all blessings. Yeah. Uh, I'm very thankful. I couldn't have done any of it on my own. There are so many people that have helped me up into this point because as much as I want to say that I was born and eloquently spoken and very uh, polished in some ways, I'm not very polished, but in ways that are, you know, I'm not crazy, but you know. Y'all, y'all, had, to uh, do, yeah, y'all had to do some routines on the stage. I kept thinking, I would have never made it that far. I was my fall. biggest the yeah. only the point that I'm trying to make with that sort of thing is that I yeah. am horrible at walking in heels. Absolutely horrible. Yeah. As a dancer, I'm always barefoot, or if I'm not barefoot, I have tennis shoes on. And polishing me up was walking in heels. It was crazy. And I'm a little vertically challenged. So I need a little bit taller heels than if somebody was a little bit taller. So since I'm five two, my heels are very, very tall and they're very scary to walk in sometimes. Uh, but I had so many people that helped me with either walking or wardrobe or how to do my hair because I had no idea how to do that either or conducting myself in an interview. I mean, there are so many people that I owe all of my successes to and that I'm so thankful for whenever they've come into my life and they came in at just the right time. Uh, it's just, you know, it's weird God wink plans that, you know, you meet somebody and then you end up creating this entire relationship with them that uh, stems for so long and that you're still in contact with and you cannot imagine your life without. It's just, yeah, I've had the craziest last three years and it doesn't really hit me until I reflect upon it because it, it just has always been go, go, go. And that is not something I'm proud of, of not you know, looking back on things as much as I should and reminiscing uh, and being too caught up in the future. I need to be more caught up in the moment, uh, but it, it's it been incredible. And I'm so thankful. I'm so, so, so thankful. Uh, don't worry. I think I, I feel the same way. And I've had many, many years to figure it out on that. Um, and I get, you, you touched on something about the friendships and everything. And I think this was you. There was, and I can't remember who it was. Somebody had a kind of a wardrobe malfunction in the sense that their yes. dress <laughs> ripped. And I mean, you were down literally helping get that thing instant him in the middle of the whole thing. And that all the judges and I just kind of looked at each other going, that was like incredibly kind thing for you to do. But I mean, what- It was, <laughs> that I mean, was such you a- You could have sunk her at that moment, you know? Oh, no. I'm just kidding. See, no, that, I, that's the difference between you and me. You're actually nice. And I probably would, you know, but no, I mean, that's the thing. And I don't think people understand that because they think it's such a competitive situation. And then they see stuff on the movies and how everything else, but y'all really yes. honestly were, were there to lift each other up and support each other. And I was very impressed by that. And by that you, is something by doing that's that. so special about the Miss yeah. Hospitality program is that these girls are so incredibly genuine and they want the best for every single contestant yeah. there. And the story behind the dress was yeah. one of my really good friends, best friend now, Brooklyn Bateman. She was Amit County, or she still is, she lives there. Uh, yeah. But her dress, absolutely stunning. But Brooklyn is also vertically challenged like I am. And the hem of the front part of her dress was too long. And it was, uh, dress rehearsal the night before we competed and she came off stage I was number eight and she was number one Amet County number one mm -hmm. alphabet right, right? No uh, so yeah. I was on stage on top of the riser and I was watching her walk and she looked stunning to me I didn't see any problem with it she comes off stage I do my walk I come off stage and she's crying I said okay what happened you look fine like what what happened she's like I was kicking my dress the whole time it felt like I was gonna trip and fall I don't know what to do, competitions tomorrow. Do I have my mom bring another evening gown, blah, blah, blah. She wanted to wear this one so bad. I said, Brooklyn, give me some safety pins. I got this. So this is all very uh, niche evening gown talk, but yeah. there was horse hair, which is a type of you know stiffer fabric at the bottom of her dress to help it keep out. Uh, but instead of keeping out, it was tucking under and getting under her feet. 
So what I did is I halved the horse hair uh, just to the seam on the side of her and then let the rest flow out in a train so that she could kick it a little bit, but it wouldn't be too long. It would be just right. And from the stage, because that horse hair is all the same color for the dress, you can't tell if it's safety pinned. And I am, I've, I'm mean with the safety pin. It's probably my years of dancing experience mm -hmm. or just being so short that I have to hem everything on me. And sometimes I have a little less time than I thought. I've hemmed a lot of things with safety, hemmed a lot of things with safety pins before. And so I just said, if you will let me safety pin the dress, I can fix it. I can fix it. And so we were done for the night. We just finished evening gown and commercials were done. So we were, were just waiting till closing number, pinned it up in about 10 minutes. And then I said, okay, walk around a little bit, see if it works. If we need to go shorter, we can go shorter because I'm not cutting off any fabric. So that's a story. Yeah. Uh, and it ended up working out. And there's a picture of us that I have on either my laptop or my phone. And uh, Kelly Dunn, who took our pictures the whole week, love her. She works at Southern Miss in the Image Center. Took a picture after I won with me in Brooklyn and Brooklyn's holding up the safe. And you can see the safety pins just as like a sweet memento of what happened and one of the uh, scariest for her you know parts of that week and it all worked out but I think any girl there would have done that uh for someone because we were all zipping each other up we were helping with fake eyelashes and putting on makeup and helping get shoes on or buttons or numbers because I always forgot to put my number on but any girl there would have done that and there are so many people I know that just like me in Brooklyn have become best friends because of this program. I would have never met them. I would have never met Brooklyn if it weren't for the week that we spent in Hattiesburg. So I just think that that just attests to the relationships that Miss Hospitality continues to create, not only between, you know, the state title holder and people that she works with, but also between contestants and their families and their friends at home, because I know a lot of them are in school now together or they're in the same sorority now. It's just, it is so sweet and so fulfilling to see these group of girls that I came to know for a week and that I love so dearly have these relationships with each other, just like I do with them. It's just, it's very sweet. And it happens every single year because every single year we have incredible girls from across the state. And it's weird to think that, you know, in a few, I guess, how many months of this, eight months, nine months until July? I'm trying to do numbers in my head. Yeah, but it's seven plus, so about nine or 10, something like that. So about, yeah, so yeah. about nine or 10, that there will be a new group of these girls that I will be spending time with, uh, just like the outgoing title holder who crowned me, McKaylee Bray, yeah. spent time with us. And I'm so, I mean, of course, I don't want to rush that on as soon as possible. <laughs> I don't want to wish that too soon upon myself, but that's, I can't help but to be look forward to looking forward to that because they are always so incredible. And I just want to know their stories and what they care about and what they want to do for the state of Mississippi, if they win or if they don't, because regardless of if they do win, if they get in the top five, they don't place at all. They are making a difference in their community and they're making a difference in Mississippi, which is what this program is all about. So I don't want to wish that upon myself too soon, but I can't help but be excited for it because I just new people who want the same things and new friends and people that may go to Ole Miss and then they go to state or then they go to Southern or Perk on the coast, you know, just having relationships everywhere and people that will help you and people that I can help people that I can do benefit from fundraisers with or do appearances with and have friends across the state. It's just, oh, I keep saying I'm so thankful for these things, but there's really no other word to describe it when it comes to the relationships that I've made over the last few months. Yeah, it really and does within that week. Yeah, it really does sound like you got more than just good scholarship money on it. Like I said, it was just such a great life experience. And you know, you talked Fantastic. about you touched on the whole brain drain thing. And I kept thinking about that mm -hmm. the whole time when I was watching everybody get up and do their commercial and so forth on that. I'm thinking, I, I think we may be okay, you know, because there are a lot of people that are pretty sharp that wanna, you know, wanna because you know, I obviously want it to be a great state because I have kids that are, I would like to stick around, you know, but you, would, you know, you want it to be a great Mississippi. What are some of the things, um, you know, I mean, you know, I would say what's your platform, and I know literacy has been one in the past for you. You've been really big with, with helping people read and with kids with reading as well, but what would you, how would you describe your, your platform? By, I have a few different 
personal things that I'm really involved in and a few things that I really care about. Uh, on the Miss Hospitality side, uh, I am pushing always for boosting tourism and boosting uh, people coming to Mississippi and being involved in things within our state. So I am a big pro small business person. I started a small business when I was 15 years old with my sister uh, called Maraki Design. So we created custom watercolor t-shirts and we put out a few all through high school and into the beginning of college. And even though we phased that out because, you know, with time and uh, everything, my sister actually took over our copyright and our licensing for her own art uh, business and studio, which is really cool. Uh, Hermine G Art on Instagram, if you want to follow her. But I learned so much about what's what comes behind small businesses and all of the work that's put into it at a very early age. And so if I can go anywhere in the state and either visit a mom and pop restaurant or a convenience store that's been there for years or a local bookstore that has a lot of history, I want to meet those people. I want to see those faces and I want to give those places the type of coverage that they deserve. Because that is what the backbone of Mississippi is. It is these stories that are carried on for generations and they're stories that people care about. And as a storyteller yourself, I know you completely understand where I'm coming from with this, but this is the backbone of what makes Mississippi, Mississippi. Right. Corporate things are fantastic. Good for business. I'm not going to say that those things are bad, but there's something about a non-chain restaurant that has so much more soul to it mm -hmm. and so much more, I mean, it feels valid in my heart to go and see these people and give my money and continually come back and Mississippi is full of those places and I want a lot of them to have the coverage that they deserve like I said uh, so throughout my year I have a few little I have a few little things in the works that I am going to keep secret for a little bit until they are announced officially oh, come on. but you, you can announce it. I don't know I don't know <laughs> you may just have to head over to Mississippi Miss Hospitality on all social media platforms to find out but uh, I, my biggest thing I want to do this year and the biggest thing I want to be involved in is getting those stories mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. It may be because I'm a marketing and journalism, hopefully will be a professional in a few years. And storytelling is something that I really appreciate as an art form. And it, when it comes to Mississippians, a state and cities that I care about so deeply, that is what I want out there. That's what I want my reign to look like. I want people to know the stories behind these faces or behind these places in Mississippi uh, that we may know, but we also may not know. And traveling across the state and meeting these people face to face, uh, if that's, you know, still safe and everything is going good uh, and being in as many places as I can, because the goal, the overarching goal for this year is to meet as many Mississippians as possible and hear their stories and hopefully push them forward in whatever way that they need. And coming out of COVID, and I don't wanna sit here and talk about COVID the whole time because you can go anywhere and hear that, but coming out of this economic stage that was recession because of COVID, we are pushing for more tourists and more tourism in Mississippi this year more than ever. And within that, a lot of it has to do with marketing. And so if I can be one of those channels that pushes out things to do in Mississippi or things that I love or things that I care about or things that I grow up going to, that is what I need to use my platform for. And that is what I'm using my platform for because sharing the stories is what's going to bring people here and what's going to make people want to be Mississippians or if they can't be Mississippians, which I don't know why you couldn't be, visit here so frequently to where they find a community and want to continue to support it. So that's, the hospitality mindset, you know, being the hospitality state, being the representative for tourism and economic development and the goodwill ambassador for Mississippi, I want the good for Mississippi. And hopefully throughout the rest of my year, I can bring those stories forward and push those people to, you know, get out there and market themselves. And maybe because I'm a marketing major and I think everyone should have great marketing, it is just something that I'm so passionate about when it comes to helping the state. Uh, in any way that I can. So I'm really excited to see where that takes me. Uh, and that may take me back to some things that I already have roots in, you know, whether that be literacy or my work with Bats and Children's Hospital. Uh, those are all really big parts of our state. And I think overall, that is pushing the good in our state. So I think all of that falls underneath my jurisdiction as Mississippi's Miss Hospitality. So Overall, I'm pushing for the good and I will be supporting the good and marketing the good on all of my platforms in the best way that I can uh, throughout the next year.
Okay, so you're 19 years old and your schedule's wearing me out. So just just to think about yeah. what you're doing, because I mean, I mean, it's a little exhausting. But hey, if you're not exhausted, you're not living. So well, exactly, <laughs> and, and you're, you are definitely living because you're. I mean, you're in college, which that alone's pretty busy. So you, you got the college pretty busy. Thing. You just pretty threw busy. in. You just threw in another major, so we'll just add a little extra on that. So you, you're going to do IMC in history, just a little bit. Yes. Uh, oh yeah, you're on the dance team too, by the way. Which congratulations yes, I am. on that. That's pretty darn cool. Thank you. Rip, which um, did you travel by the way to the Tennessee game? I did not. Oh, you and missed I'm the very. Time. I'm kind of glad that I did it because it looked a little dangerous. Uh, mm -hmm. but for Rebelettes, we are at every single home game, yeah. uh, and we do a lot of appearances throughout the year. Uh, right. and that's another way that I've become really involved within the Oxford community before hospitality and making those yeah. connections that I can utilize for hospitality is through yeah. Rebelettes. It's something I'm really. I cannot imagine my college experience without, uh, it keeps me on a fantastic schedule. And I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty hefty schedule and my days are very busy, but I do a lot better on a busier schedule. I have a planner, yeah. my planner is insane, wherever it is. It's, <laughs> I, have, I have to have a daily planner that yeah. goes from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. because it's filled up every single day. And it's, for some people that may sound a little crazy, for me, it just sounds like everyday life and I'm very thankful for it because there are so many people that would love to have my position and uh, be either on dance team or be in the two majors or go to Ole Miss. And so and I'm very thankful too. for where I am. Yeah. And I'm in a sorority. Yeah. And I give campus I give campus tours of Ole Miss ambassadors. Yeah. And, and you're I, mean, in the I can name college. off I can yeah. name off other things. I I just I've always been very involved. I think my parents uh and still in yeah, have you been that yeah. way your whole life? And it's something your parents encouraged along the way. I've been that way definitely them. my whole life. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think yeah. it's it's never been anything bad. Absolutely not. I've always loved to be involved because that connects me to not only people, but my community wherever I am. Yeah. My parents instilled in me in that yeah. very, very early because I saw my dad being on the board for United Way in Hattiesburg. And my mom was writing... Uh, columns and articles for the uh, plays that we were in as children. So I saw them being very involved in their community and them emphasizing the importance of that, not only in their lives, but also for us. And so throughout school, all of my siblings and I, we were in lots of different clubs and organizations, whether that be, you know, for scholastics or extracurriculars or service. Um, we've all had our own little pathways through high school and through life. And now for me and my sister through college. Uh, so that's definitely stuck with me. I love every single organization that I'm involved in on campus. That's something I'm very, very blessed that Ole Miss has offered me is the opportunity to be involved in so much and to learn through those avenues. And it may be a little crazy at times, but I'm so incredibly thankful for it. And I cannot imagine a college experience without every single one of the programs that I'm in uh, because they are also fulfilling and I've met so many incredible people and made so many and just fun memories and it may be stressful but I can't imagine it can't imagine it I mean like I said you're you're, you're what second year now into college and I mean you've already done probably more than some folks do in four so that's pretty impressive I always try to encourage people and I also did this I'm hoping to do this through hospitality when it comes to uh, getting girls involved in our program yeah. is that if you love something, you will make time for it. If right. you want to do something, you will make time for it. And that is a quote that I live my life by. I know when things get too much on my plate and I know when to step back, but I try to do a very good job of figuring out what I can do and how well I can do it. So I'm never going to halfway do something. I'm always going to be 110% going, 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 going until either I give out or I get the job done. So either way, it's going to happen. Uh, but through hospitality and through the things that I've learned, and not only just me, but every single contestant for years, ever since the program has started, they have learned so much about themselves, Mississippi, mm -hmm. earned scholarship money, made fantastic memories and made connections for the rest of their life. They've gotten jobs out of these opportunities, and it's so beneficial and so one thing I'm hoping to do throughout the year is to talk to groups of girls across the state, whether that be on a college campus or girls groups that are after school or sponsored by a school, uh, just telling them about our program and how many things that they can earn and learn through this program and that they should get involved with it whenever they uh, turn 18 or you're 
22, you know, it doesn't matter. You don't have to wait till a certain age to start uh, just sharing those opportunities with them. I think it's going to be a really incredible way to grow this program in the future, but also to get more and more people involved with the mission of Miss Hospitality mm -hmm. and how they can help in the future. So whether that be being a donor to our program or giving a scholarship, no matter how big or small, that benefits every single girl on that stage and it benefits the program in itself. So I am hoping to talk to businesses and people uh, and young girls to be a part of our program because it's not just for those contestants on the stage. It is a community outreach. It is a community within itself full of people that want to push Mississippi forward in any way that they can. And I'm hoping to talk to as many of those people as possible this year and make those connections with them and hopefully get them to see our show or be a part of our show next July. Yeah, the, the program has littles too. They, you, like you have a little sister. Yes, so it's kind of yes cool. I had a little sister <laughs> and I actually got to surprise her at her 11th birthday party a few weeks ago Aww. when I went home. Yeah. And uh, her name is Bennett Blair. Mm -hmm. She is exactly like me. I like to say she's a carbon copy of myself, but she's tall and blonde. <laughs> and she is sassy and smart and very talented. And that Little Miss Hospitality program is fostering that love for Mississippi and for this program within those little 11 year old hearts. And so anyone who has a daughter or a cousin or a niece that loves, you know, making connections with other little girls and having fun and also uh, wanting to have a role model, uh, either a 20, you know, 18 year old girl who is doing incredible things in the community and in our state. Uh, it's an, a fantastic program and it's very, very fun. They go on stage, they wear beautiful white dresses, they get to wave and dance and spend time with us. It's just an incredible program. And I encourage anybody to get daughters, nieces, anyone involved uh, in this program because it is so much fun and you learn so much about it and it's fostering that love, uh, which is what we're all about here at Miss Hospitality. Jane, you're in an auditorium, high school auditorium. You're speaking to a group of high school kids. What advice would you give to them and what reasoning would you give to them to stay in Mississippi? There are so many opportunities here and you need to seek them out. Yeah. It's not worth dismissing everything in Mississippi because you've grown up here or you think you've outgrown it. You cannot outgrow a state. You can't. You just need to go somewhere else and find another opportunity that best suits you. For example, if I lived in, well, I do live in Hattiesburg. Let's say I just graduated college and I said, I need to move out of Mississippi. And somebody says, why? Says, well, I don't want to go back to Hattiesburg. Well, there's a million other cities in Mississippi that have incredible offers and incredible opportunities. Go seek them out. Seek out these opportunities here because one thing that Mississippi is doing is prioritizing the brain power of our youth and prioritizing their talents and they want you and they're going to seek you out let them seek you out see those opportunities see what they're going to do for you because in the end Mississippi is your home it's where you've grown up it's where your family is and that is what you want to make better so in my life I want to see Mississippi continually get better in any way that I can help or any way that I can benefit them in itself so if i was standing in a room with high schoolers that may you know be a little angsty I'm not gonna lie i was a high schooler i feel like i can say that it's very warranted i feel like they've outgrown their city or outgrown mississippi don't dismiss the state that easy because there's so many things growing here and so many opportunities that would be perfect for you don't dismiss it because you think that you don't want to be here and that's something that's a little hard for stubborn high school students to hear. And hopefully they, you know, even if they go out of state for college, they realize that they still have ties to Mississippi and they want to go back and help. But one thing that we need to do as adults and as the society that they will be going into is emphasizing to them that we want them here, that we want their talents, that we appreciate and we know that they would do fantastic things here and so I think it's a two-way street both parties need to seek each other out and realize the benefits that they can give each other and realize how important it is to stay in a state that has helped you grow up I would not be the same person that I was if I grew up in Alaska Mississippi made me 
who I am today. And I am going to do everything in my power to give back that joy and love and growth that I experience back to the state in any way that I can. And that could be hospitality. That can also be volunteering at a soup kitchen in Jackson, Mississippi. It has many different avenues and don't dismiss things because you think you know, because there's so many things going on here and just seeking them out is going to give you that story and that beginning that you are seeking, but you can have here in Mississippi. So I guess that's what I would tell them if I was them or if I was standing there in an auditorium, hopefully getting them to stay and hopefully uh, emphasizing to them that Mississippi is so incredible and there's nowhere else like it right. in the world. And many, many people have said that. There is nothing like this place. There are nothing like these people. You are not going to find this anywhere else. There's a comfort here, but also a newness. It, it's something that you really can't explain unless you've experienced it. And I've had the privilege of experiencing it for the last 19 years, living here the whole time, born and raised. So I hope that they would stick here with me and see how they can make a difference in the state and start a new beginning here and create their own life here in Mississippi. One of the things we did with our kids is that we traveled with them just so that they could see that the world, what the world outside was like, and then come back and maybe appreciate some things about Mississippi too. And I think that was pretty helpful. Mm -hmm. Did you travel a lot as a kid? I did. Now I didn't do a lot of the, I've never been out of the country. That's one of my fun facts. Okay. Uh, I did a lot of traveling, you know, within the Southeast. Mm -hmm. And then as I've gotten older, I think partially because my mom didn't want to take any toddlers on planes, which I completely oh, understand. That's so much fun. Sounds horrible. I can't believe. Oh she my gosh! No, she did not take us to Disney World until we could all walk for a very long time. Well, that makes complete sense. So yeah, which I think is completely understood. Yeah, very I'll, I'll wait till they're sixteen before I took them to Disney World. Oh, I I, I was a little bit earlier. I was seven or eight. I'm which, kidding. yeah, my brother, my brother was I don't know what would he have been five or four he ended yeah, up it's good for the younger day. kids my older my oldest son was kind of like yeah okay yeah yeah I had a fantastic time yeah. but I did a lot of traveling within the state my dad grew up in Laurel my mom grew up here in Oxford okay and so I would you know we would go to grandma's house in Laurel grandma's house in Oxford uh my mom worked for years in Jackson so I spent a lot of time in Jackson at her house in Bellhaven uh, that we still go to all the time now. And so a lot of my traveling when I was very little was within the state of Mississippi, mm -hmm. which I really appreciate because I had a lot better grasp on this state and what was happening here as I grew up in comparison to some of my, you know, friends or contemporaries or classmates. Uh, so I knew what was happening on the coast. I knew what Hattiesburg was like. I knew what Jackson was like. I knew what zoos I liked the best. I knew which restaurant in Oxford I liked the best, which was never a restaurant. It was always my grandmother's house. But that's where I did most of my traveling. And then when I got older and I was going to places, you know, Chicago or New York or DC, uh, or I mean, even Florida, you know, yeah. different places outside of the state that are different from Mississippi, I would go and see. I would take it in. I would enjoy my time there, but I always wanted to come back. And that was something that I thought was kind of strange at first because, you know, I'm this really extroverted, loud, and, you know, I would like to say fun person. And I thought that I was going to live for New York City. And I do really like New York, but I just don't know if I could ever live there. It's just learning experiences like that. That's what I learned through traveling and seeing, you know, other places and appreciating where I grew up and the comfort that I found in Mississippi probably because I grew up there and I really appreciate it as a state and in the places that I've lived, which is the same house in Hattiesburg since I was born. So I find a lot of comfort in that home style, you know, experience because it, there's nothing like coming home, no matter where you are, it, there's a lot of comfort in it. Yeah. I still like going home, even though I'm only three hours away, four hours ish depends. Uh, but there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. You know, uh, one of the things I really loved during the pageant were the commercials, obviously. And, and you probably could still do your commercial in your sleep at this point. <laughs> and it's, it's drilled. It. It's drilled. 
ought to make you do it. But I mean, I didn't know there was an inland <laughs> lighthouse, but I found that out. And I didn't know there was a white squirrel. And I found that out. And, See, neither did I. Who yeah. would have known? Who would have known that these things were in our state if they weren't da -da -da -da, marketed? Yeah, there you go. By the contestants. Yeah, they did a I'm great job. I'm telling you, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. So what are you gonna what are you gonna do when you grow up? Well, I mean, what's your plan? Because like I said, you got the mm -hmm. IMC thing going. You got some history. You're, you're you're gonna decide to study history too, which I think is just smart. I mean, if really you can't understand the context of anything if you don't know history. So I mean, I think that's a good combination. Yeah. I have a marketing degree, so just to let you know, it is an incredibly useful thing to have. So I think you'll do See, that. that's that's exactly why I was leaning towards it. So my mom was a journalist throughout my childhood, before, way before I was born. Uh, she was journalism and English and had a French minor. She mm -hmm. was all over the place too. Yeah. Uh, but I really clung to IMC, which is Integrated Marketing Communications, which is a new technology and new media uh, approach to marketing. And it pretty much combines any sort of marketing degree. So I'm learning about PR, I'm learning about event planning, marketing, graphic design. It's a fantastic degree program. And it's very, not only unique to, the University of Mississippi, but there's no other degree like that in the SEC. Uh, and there are only a few scattered across the nation. So I feel very thankful that that is being offered to me here at Ole Miss. Uh, and that was my degree that I first started off with. And I was, I don't really know exactly what I want to do. What I'm leaning towards right now is doing health communication and working in marketing and PR for a children's hospital. Uh, probably because of my work with Batson, I just love that place so much. So if I could work for them and uh, market for that entire brand. That would be fantastic. Uh, and then, like you mentioned, I added a history major, which is actually a separate degree program. So I'll be graduating with a BS and a BA, which is a little crazy and a little ambitious, but I'm gonna do it uh, just because history is my favorite subject. And I was gonna take dozens of history classes throughout my time here at Ole Miss anyway, just because it is my favorite thing to learn about and favorite thing to write about. Uh, favorite thing to study, everything. So I added that last year, last semester, and now officially this semester. And so I'm starting off that program as well. Uh, and so I just think that that can kind of add to any sort of learning experience, because like you said, you're not going to understand anything unless you understand history. So I added it. I think it was also probably partially because my dad was a history major at Rhodes. And he was history of English parliament, which was his specialization, Yeah. which I think that also led him to watching the history channel as I went to sleep every night as a child and me listening to it until I fell asleep. So uh, I guess I can give this to my dad uh, that he inspired me with the history major. And uh, I've had a lot of professors just say, you know, there's nothing like a liberal arts degree. It's going to take you so many places uh, if you were really passionate about history and you really love it go ahead and add it. So I've added it. Uh, and hopefully that'll just, you know, be a fun little course study, uh, little, even though it's a completely separate degree program. But I'm hoping to work in marketing and PR uh, for Children's Hospital. Those plans may change, but I think I will stick to marketing and PR wherever I end up, mm -hmm. uh, maybe for an agency, maybe for a small business, maybe for Mississippi, who knows. Uh, but I think that that's where I'm going to end up when it comes to Obviously, I've talked about marketing probably six times in this interview. Uh, I just love it so much. I think it's very beneficial when it comes to promoting the things that you love. So well, it good, really works well with what I'm doing now. Right. That's what I do. Well, the good the good news is on the adding the extra degree that gives you something to do from ten o'clock at night till five in the morning because you had all that open exactly. Space in the schedule, so exactly, and I've actually gotten pretty good at going to bed at 11.45 every single night and waking up at 7.15. So even though I'm busy, I got a good schedule. I wake up and I do my homework, do my homework before I go to bed, I eat three meals a day plus snacks. I got practice. Yeah, It's the planner, I'm telling you. It is the planner. That is what helps me. So what kind of planner do you use? I love them. I've got the monk manual. That's what I use. I have the day designer. Ah, uh, that's and a good one. Yeah. It is fan fantastic i literally cannot imagine my life without it do i drop a good amount of money on a planner each year yes is it completely worth it absolutely yeah. and i've gotten my friends hooked on it too because it has a it has a full to-do list side and 
it's just fantastic. And I carry it around everywhere. You're never going to see me without my planner. It's either in my backpack. I'm carrying it. I have it out in class at all times because there's a lot of things that go on up here. And so just to make sure that everything is read and seen, I just write it down. My planners look crazy every single day, uh, but it keeps me, it keeps me motivated, keeps me clear conscience and just handling my day in the best way that I can, uh, whether it's really busy or it's not. So that's kind of where I've been. Uh, but I recommend the day designer to anyone who needs a planner because they are fantastic. I guess one last question. I mean, obviously you've got, as we've discussed, lots of things to do today, but um, <laughs> who, who works with you um, through, the, through your title? I mean, who, who helps you book things, get things taken care of? I mean, you have a handler, obviously, somebody that you work with. Is that through MDA? Uh, no, it's actually through, well, the whole hospitality program and our board uh, are a bunch of tourism professionals and just professionals in general throughout the state. Yes. Uh, so my main people are located in Hattiesburg. So that's uh, Marlo that's Dorsey and Kristen Brock. Yes, it's very easy. Uh, Miss Courtney and Paige who do uh, help me with marketing and social media. And um, then we have Zach Holifield on the coast. He is my main person for uh, appearances and preparation, uh, whether it be for interviews like this or mm -hmm. Uh, different things like I'll be at the governor's conference on tourism this Friday in Jackson yeah. so they will be there with me as well so it's made up of, of a lot of tourism professionals that either work at you know coastal Mississippi or visit Hattiesburg or visit Mississippi and then I also have some contacts like Coral uh, in MDA and uh, people at the state level so it's pretty much all over the place uh, but my main people are either in Hattiesburg or Zach on the coast uh, but most of them work through Visit Hattiesburg. That is nice having having people though, isn't it? It's very nice. It's so nice to text one of them and just be like, hey, I have a, I have a quick question. What do I say about this? Or it could even be about my life and, you know, adding, should I take this class? Do you think it would be beneficial for me? Uh, but they're really helping me on all areas of my life, which I greatly appreciate. And I'm sure my parents appreciate as well, because that means that they don't have to answer every single phone call. Uh, at all times of the day, uh, but they have been so incredibly helpful with me, not only learning how to uh, handle this title along with college, but also how to uh, help Mississippi in any way that I can. So they've been very big parts of uh, some of the plans that we have coming up and some of the things I'm trying to get involved in throughout my year, uh, but I cannot, I cannot have done this without them. They are fantastic and uh, they do such an incredible job with this program every year and I'm very blessed that they are working with me this year. So. Well, you threw out the website for um, Mississippi Miss Hospitality earlier. Throw it out again mm -hmm. so that folks can find out a little bit more about it. That's MS Miss Hospitality or Mississippi's Miss Hospitality on all social media platforms. Uh, that biggest ones, I would say, Instagram and Facebook, or you can visit misshospitality.com uh, and maybe .net. You'll just look up Miss Hospitality, uh, Mississippi's Miss Hospitality, and you'll find us. Uh, to see a parent's request or learn about our program and the history of it, uh, learn about me. Uh, you can find all of that there on either our social media platforms or on our website. Uh, so you can go check it out if you want to. Uh, I would encourage you to. It's a pretty good Jane, website. Well, I do have to say so myself. Well, Jane, I did not create it, but. Yeah. Congratulations on, A, I'm winning, but I mean, I mean, I was really happy for you that night, but just seeing what you've done with the title so far has been amazing. And I mean, I'm really proud of you. I think you're doing great and you're gonna have a great reign, I have a feeling. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to see, you know, the future and what happens uh, throughout my year. And then just kind of leaving the best legacy that I can, not only on this title, but on Mississippi. And just knowing that I, did everything that I could and created programs or held conferences yeah. uh, to help better our state is just what I'm hoping to get out of this year. And I'm really excited to see where that takes me. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you for watching this episode of Mississippi Stories. Make sure to subscribe to the Mississippi Today YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified every time a new video uploads. 